Hey guys, meteorologist Lindsay Slater here. Not only do I have active weather to talk about, but I also do have a lot to talk about in terms of the sun. What is the sun doing? The sun is very active right now. We have a lot of active regions. Maybe I could say active one more time. <laughs> but right now, the the big ticket is are these regions right here, 4294, 4296, 4298. These ones have been really popping off some, some decent flaring. Um, I'm going to show up the 131 right there. Boom. We had a big old flare that launched this morning, um, this morning being the 8th. I believe this happened around um, midnight um, central time, but like about 6 UTC um, uh, that occurred earlier. I would, yeah, 6 UTC. So it was midnight in central time. So uh, if I go back a little bit, we can actually watch this flare happen. So right here, keep your eyes peeled over there and then I'll move it forward. And then boom, we have this big flare. Whether or not it was associated with the CME, um, this was the X point, I believe X point one 1.1 flare that did cause a R3 radio blackout. Um, and like I said, it was around 6, 5 or 6 UTC on the 8th. So this happened early this morning. Um, now, remember, when it comes to flares, this causes radio blackouts. Sometimes this can lead to solar energetic particle events as well. But this was on the SWIPSI website that talks about what expectations are. Um, and we can actually look at the X-ray flux uh, charts that shows it right here. And you can see this is a look at the solar flares that we've seen. So right there, X1.14 is what it shows up on here. And if I zoom in the map a little bit, a very small duration event. It went up and it went down. So it's a very simple, it wasn't like the one that followed this one. You can see the M-class flare took some time to go back down when it came to the X-ray flux. So it is interesting to see this one was a quick burner, if you will, and then it went right back down. We still do have impacts from it, obviously. Um, any of those impacts would, these ones were mainly felt like over Indonesia, uh, Eastern Australia, Eastern Australia, bleh, Western Australia. There we go. Uh, that's where you have that R3 radio blackout. So very interesting to see that. Um, this was region 4298, which I was showing you right there. That guy popped up 4298, giving us this flare. This is a new one, I think, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Do we get another flare out of this? Because it was 4298 that caused the one earlier this morning. So I'm wondering, I got to just kind of go through this with you guys as we watch the earth, watch it go through the latest phases here. So there's, again, a lot of going, a lot of things going on. We also had some coronal hole regions. I always like to show the 211 that highlights that coronal hole region. We already had one kind of go around the backside. So it kind of went like this. So we are seeing the bigger coronal hole kind of on the backside of the sun. And then if we look at the, I believe it's 304, we can look at any of those filaments and prominences. The sun's been very active on this front. You can kind of see right here, lots of those going on really active in there. I mean, that's just a mess. That's a very complex sunspot that's been causing some of this activity. And actually, I can show you that here. Uh, where was it? I was just looking at it on on Space Weather Live. It was showcasing the sunspot region. And of course, now I can't find it. So oh, there it is right here. 4294 complex, 4299, very complex. Whenever you have, um, this is beta, gamma, delta, I believe. Whenever you have those I'm sorry. Yeah. Beta, gamma. I was right. Beta, gamma, delta. Whenever you have more of these letters next to your sunspot, that highlights the complexity and that can sometimes mean that it's going to do more things. So we do have, uh, you know, a beta, gamma, delta. Um, the flare probabilities are listed here. So we can keep an eye on all these little regions here. This one, see, just has one little guy that shows that it's not a very complex sunspot. So that one still has to grow a little bit, but just really cool to kind of watch those sunspots. This one, uh, beta, I think that's delta, beta, delta. I'm not good with those ones. Yep, beta, delta, I was right. Um, this one becoming more complex. You can see the different polarities by the colors here. So, but the size of it has dropped quite a bit. However, the sunspot number has increased. So we'll keep a close eye on some of those regions. Region. So first up, we had the X flare with the R3 radio blackout. Was there a CME associated with it? Let's go ahead and go to Enlil, which is our solar wind modeling. And this is, again, what we like to use when we want to see, oopsies, wrong one, when we want to see what's been going on um, and whether or not we have CMEs associated with it. So this is a look at the 11. So the, I believe this is highlighting the X class flare. So we had the flare um, launched on the 8th. There we go. I think that was a different one. Honestly, I think we had two. Here we go. There's the 8th. This one likely going to be arriving on the 9th. 
and we would potentially see some auroras with it. When it comes to Wisconsin, the Midwest, you might see some of this activity. I'm not going to talk about it a, a lot or honestly at all in my weathercast because we have such a huge amount of things going on weather-wise that regardless of when this hits, I would say our impacts would probably be on the 9th, which is tomorrow at 3 p.m. You might get some auroras out of this for one, 3 p.m. It might be like, I would say... This would likely give us auroras around sunset time for maybe Wisconsin, maybe even Milwaukee, maybe as far south as that. However, with that being said, we have such huge, you know, weather systems that are coming in here that I just don't see us having clear enough skies for us to see this activity. So um, I am mentioning it to you right now. But I will not be talking about it on the news at all. Um, we did see a little bit of a proton flux as a result of that flare. Um, it does look like it wasn't enough to give us any SCP events or solar energetic particle events. Other um, other uh, environments I can look at or other venues here. You can see some drops there in your BT or sorry BZ. We had a southern BZ, but it was again not too. I'm not really going to focus too much on that, just to kind of show you active regions. We had the solar flare that popped. Um, we did have a CME associated with the previous one. So there's just a lot of things going on in the sun right now, and uh, I will keep you guys posted. But again, I likely will not be talking about this on the news as a result of the fact that we have a lot of active weather around here. And quite frankly, auroras don't really matter when you can't see them, right? All right, guys, that's all for me today. Um I will keep an eye on the sun. I always watch it. If I feel the need to hop on here again, I will before next week. You guys have a good week.